Boss, good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, sorry, still setting up. Um, and the reason being is that uh, I've just put in the chat that we've had two power cuts in the last uh, couple of hours. And the last one was just literally a few seconds ago. So the Wi-Fi is just this second come back on, which is good. Um, literally about a minute ago. So that's good. So hopefully you can uh, hear me um, and, and see me. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, apologies for that. And apologies if I disappear because you'll now know why. But yeah, there's been two power cuts uh, this evening. So um, fingers crossed we'll, we'll be okay to continue. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so it all goes right. Literally the Wi-Fi came on about a minute and a half ago. So that's uh, fantastic. So um, anyway, us, good evening. Welcome to uh, Karate in Your Own Dojo uh, with myself, Sensei Scoo, and hopefully yourselves at home. And uh, this evening we're gonna continue um, our work towards our syllabus. Okay, that's our grading syllabus and, and, uh, and a Sahi Shotokan Karate reference book. And um, what we've been doing over the last two weeks is uh, preparing our minds as well as our bodies for potential gradings that we hope to come in the near future. Fingers crossed that will be sometime in, I would say, May or, May or June. Fingers crossed. OK, if I don't hit May, then we're definitely doing one in June, as we would do normally anyway, because hopefully the restrictions should have finished by then if all goes well. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we're working on our Kion to start with. Then we'll move on to um, Kumite and then Kata. OK, so this will be sort of over a period of uh, probably six weeks. So I'd imagine this will take, take in terms of uh, training wise. So we've done the first week, which was last week, where we did our basic punches and um, uh, blocks. And then this week we started on Tuesday, we did uh, three kicks and various different kicking combinations that are part of their, their, their kind of um, uh, their, their gary, their, their, their units, as it were. And then tonight we're going to do two more kicks, okay, and the combinations that fit with those as well. So uh, that's the plan. Of course, all of this depends on whether or not we have another power cut in Clifton, um, of which, uh, as I say, there's been two very recently. So keep, keep our fingers crossed. If you hear loads of alarms go off, that's uh, because neighbours' uh, house alarms are going off because of the, uh, the power cut. So... Uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, I probably could transfer it to my phone on 4G and even hotspot it to my laptop. But if the power goes, that might all be problematic. But we'll see. We'll see. And doing karate in the dark is great fun. It's a, called ninja training. And uh, we used to do that in the dojo many, many years ago. Turn all the lights off and try and do kata in complete darkness. It's not easy, um, but, it, but it is good fun. So anyway, there's, there's all the excuses out of the way. So yeah, so welcome to Thursday. This evening's lesson, we're going to be focusing on Mawashigiri and Yushirigiri. Okay, two, I think, very technical, complicated kicks. So we're going to work on them as a core basic, and then we're going to work on them within our grading syllabus, as it were. Um, the, the changes actually from the basic kick to the grading syllabus are very similar. Uh, sorry, very simple, really. There's, there's not like loads and loads of build up to this. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, make sure, again, if you could, as on Tuesday, have yourself a little bit of room to move forwards and backwards just so you can do at least one uh, revolution of kick. So kicking forwards and then turning, kicking backwards. Um, I'll try to demonstrate the kicks in different angles so you're able to sort of see what to, what to do. Um, I'm using a fisheye lens as per normal, so um, that makes me look really fat. Uh, just saying that, actually, that might be here. But anyway... Um, and, and, and hopefully um, you'll be able to do these kicks and understand uh, why they're part of the syllabus. Okay, so that's, that's the plan. Um, I know I haven't put my sky banner up, but I normally do. Um, as I said, literally, we've just been in pitch black for the last uh, uh, 20 minutes, so um, not possible this evening, rushing around to get this all set up for you. So uh, that's, that's going to be the lesson. So what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of a recap of Tuesday's lesson with the three kicks that we did then, Mai Geri, Yoko Geri Kiyagi, Yoko Geri Kikomi. Um, and then we will continue with more Shigeri Shirigeri. So let's say good evening to a few people because it's lovely to see some names up there. Good evening, Tim. Us. Good evening, uh, Family Huxtable. Good evening, Isaac. Us. Hope you are okay. Good evening, Andy Sensei Konbanwa. Um, Good evening, uh, Kevin. Us. Uh, good evening, Thomas. Good evening, Kayla. Um, us. Good evening, yes. And good evening, Ken. Hope you are all well. Uh, don't forget, this Saturday is the Black Belt uh, um, training, which we have every Saturday at 10 a.m. If you're over 16 and one of our downgrade Black Belts and you wish to join that session and you don't already get the link or you're not part of the WhatsApp group, please let me know. Then I add you to it. I think I put everyone on it that I could remember as a Black Belt and went through all my registers and uh, um, you know I should know that, but I, I do, but I hate missing people. So if I've missed anybody, I do apologize. I'm good at kicking and punching and blocking, not so good on the admin side. So um, that's this Saturday uh, at 10 a.m. Okay, so anyway, let's get the uh, about first. 
we'll do a quick warm up because um, I need to stretch. I little pull on my hamstring on Tuesday, so I need to take it easy this evening, and I might have to change my mind if that feels like it's getting worse. Okay, wait. Okay, so arms just stretch, stretching up. Okay, up to the top and then back. Up again to the top, over to your left. Top, over to the right. Okay, arms down. Left arm up, right arm down. Pull down with your right arm, pull up with your left arm. Okay, change. Pull down with your left arm, pull up with your right arm. Okay, I might have said the same thing twice there. Arms up, shoulders down. Yeah, so shoulders up, shoulders down. Okay, so uh, take your arms, just twisting on the spot. No hip movement, just use your torso. Okay, so now use your feet and use your hips to turn around. Very good, Zen Kutsudachi. So we're mainly stretching this evening in the legs because that's what we're working on this evening. Not too worried about the arms so much this evening. Okay, so make sure you can feel the stretch in your legs. When you're doing uh, stretching, yeah, it's not stance work, it's, it's stretching. So we need to be stretching those muscles. Okay, then change the other way. And back to the front. Really give that a low stretch. And the other way, really give that a low stretch. Okay, good, shake the legs. Okay, feet together, so right knee up, okay. With, uh, with your leg, Okay, try to, with this supporting leg, sit down on it, okay, and keep this tight to the body. Just gives you a little bit more balance and then bring it up as high as you comfortably can. Okay, just flex the foot, just the ankle, okay, and then the leg. Bring it back down, okay, same again, let your hips drop, okay, get your balance, bring your foot up, bring it in. Bring it higher, bring it higher, flex the ankle. Bring the knee up, flex the foot. Bring it back down, try to make control. Okay, hips, koshi, move them around. Okay, uh, feet twice shoulder width apart. Okay, and bend your back, put your hands down to the floor. Pushing back, stretch your hamstring. And head over to the left knee. And over to the right knee. Back down centre, a little bit wider, not too far. Stretching back. Okay, sitting on the floor, feet apart. Okay, just let your body drop forwards. Okay, feet together, pushing down. All right, bring your feet in a bit closer, push down. And relax. Okay, left foot out, right foot over the left foot, left elbow, right knee, twist behind. Change legs, left foot over right leg, right elbow to left knee. Okay, good, up again. String these nobies. Let's get ready for the bow. Let's <clears throat> go. Okay. Seat up. Show me, ready? Sensei, are you ready? Horse. Oh. 
Hey, Ray. Oh, Awesome. Arigato. Okay, good. So let's get going. <clears throat> so just as you slowly warming up, <clears throat> practicing uh, Mayu Giri, Kiyagi Giri, and uh, Yoko Giri Kikomi uh, from Tuesday. Just take your time. Don't overdo things too much too soon. Okay. So wait. Awesome. Hey, your weight. So we're not going to do the whole syllabus again from Tuesday. We just want to recap. Okay, just briefly. So stepping forward, down, get right. Itch. Okay, so check your stance. Make sure your hips are in hand me. Then turn into uh, showman, okay? So hips are now square. Use your arms for stability to help you, okay? And kicking my Gary Chudan, just kicking forwards. Itch. Hey, and down the left leg, itch. Okay, so to morte, to turn, the back leg moves across. Okay, you turn the amber eye. Okay, and then put your hands back at the sides and should be in the correct position. Now kicking Jodan my Gary, so to the chin, ish. Try not to bob up and down, knee. Remember, back leg crossed, turn, get out of right. Okay, hand square. Kicking my Gary, Jordan, each. Knee. Turn, get out of right. Hand square, kicking my Gary, Chudan, each. Knee. One more take turn. Eight, Yamati. Eight, Kyotsuke, horse. Hey, uh, please, please remember, whenever we're doing uh, kihon, kumite, uh, kata, makes no difference, okay? Everything we do starts with a vowel, was, and then yoi. Everything finishes with a vowel, was, and then yoi. Now, yoi means ready. So why do we bow and get ready? And then when we finish, we bow and stay ready. We stay ready. Because we should, we should be, okay? Karatika should be able to defend themselves at any time, and so you need to always be ready. So, always good preparation for that event. Should it ever happen, and I'm sure it won't, you come back to your way you're ready and focused. When Sensei says Inoi, okay, or relax, then you just relax, okay? At which point you can just bow again, okay? And then you can be more casual. Casual is not laying on the floor. Thus, casual is standing still to attention, uh, like Kotsuke, okay? Um, my students know that I do not like this, okay? You do not fold your arms in my dojo, okay? It's the worst thing in the world. I call it going to the dark side of the force, okay? And remember, if you're a Star Wars fan like me, the dark side of the force, bad things happen there. They're bad things. Don't do this. It's disrespectful, I think, in the dojo. Um, why don't we have pockets in our dogi? Because, again, it'd be bad to put our hands in our pockets. We, we can't um, defend ourselves or do anything, so if our arms are folded, they're not good. If they're down in their pockets, they're no good. This is why the suit is designed the way it is. Minimal, minimal uh, to take away the focus of the clothing, more focus on the kicks, punch blocks, etc., etc. So, <clears throat> little bits about etiquette there. Oops. Okay, so, uh, Yoko Gary Kiyagi, so side snap kicks. So if you remember when we did this, I'm just gonna move to my right to so I'm enable me. Now I can only get one of these kicks in sideways. My kitchen's not big enough for me to do two of these, I don't think. Maybe, if I squeeze my stance in, it might be. So, ready? And yoi, and sit down into kibirachi, side stance, each. Okay, so remember what we said on Tuesday, we said about the arms being behind the bottom, okay? So tend to, if the arms come forwards, we tend to roll the shoulders, tilt, and lose our balance. So this helps correct our form, okay? Correct our form. So yoko geri kiyagi, okay, looking at where we're uh, kicking, so we're kicking to our left, okay, or in my case, I'm kicking to my left, the right foot travels across, okay, and this transition phase crosses the other foot, okay. Then it's at that point that my knee comes up, pointing in the direction of where I want my kick, okay. Then we snap the kick, bring it back, and then we're back into kibirachi. And I'm not going to attempt a second one because the radiator will disappear. So <clears throat> that's, that's the kick. So it's a snap kick, but again, the difference between this and Kikomi, as I said on Tuesday, one is a snap, one is a thrust, okay? Another way of remembering them is that when you do this kiyagi, the knee goes where you want the foot to go. So the direction of the kick. Thus, Kikomi is the same as Maigiri, and face is the same as Maigiri, as if we're kicking to the front, but we're kicking to the side, and I'll show you how to do that one in a second. But that's the way to remember them. Kiyagi, direction of the kick, Kikomi to the front, then ready for push. Thus, Okay. Um, 
because people sometimes get these kids confused, and especially juniors. Um, my best way of describing this to you is that the Kiagi is like a clap of thunder, a bolt of lightning, a firework going off. It's a real bang of a technique. Okay, Kikomi is more of a, uh, I, I use the analogy of the Shinkans and the bullet train just pushing its way along across Japan from one end to the other, okay, at high speed. Okay, it's a real thrust kick. So it's really pushing, pushing, pushing. They're okay? not the same. Okay, so they are very much different. Um, so, so please sort of bear that in mind. And they're different to do, okay? But because we do them both in side stance, I think people get them confused quite quickly. So back to kibodachi stance then, okay? So again, remember those arms, okay? Your kibodachi, remember balance, you need to be roughly 50-50, okay, ideally. Let your knees be flexible and natural. Don't force your knees out, okay? That's not gonna do you any good, it didn't me. I end up in hospital with bad knees. So you need to make sure this is nice and flexible because it enables you to move better. You step across, knee up, kick, back, and down. And you, and you see that snap in action, okay? So again, arms back straight, arms behind the bottom will do that for you naturally. Focus on where you're going. Do not focus on your feet, you don't need to. The stance is not what we're focusing on here, it's the kick. So come across, looking knee up, kick back, and down, okay? So mawate turn. Kicking one, each, back, and down, kicking two, knee, and back. Looking the other way, one more take, each, a knee. Okay, now you've seen that I'm bringing the foot back to the knee and down to, again, same as my Gary, demonstrate control. Okay, if you do Kiyagi Gary correctly, and it's harder in Kibidachi, if I'm honest, okay, than, than maybe Zen Kutsudachi is for my Gary, but you should, if you do this correctly, and with the will of the gods, kick, and then maybe do a second kick, so a secondary kick, or a secondary punch, or a sweep, so you're, you're not losing your balance, okay? So once more, kicking here, Kiyagi Gary, oh, I lost my balance. So, that's not the idea. The idea is bring the foot back. Kick, bring it back, and then take control of it again. So you want to make sure when you're kicking, come across, kick, kick, kick. Yeah, you can continue. So that, that's why I want you to have in your mindset that not just one kick, possibly another, possibly a punch, possibly a sweep, all those other wonderful things you can do. So trying to uh, keep your form as much as you can. It's not an easy kick to do that, especially when you're traveling. If you come up a little bit here, easy to lose your balance. Try to, and this is hard, keep that weight down on this supporting leg, okay? So you're called Gary Kiyagi, side snap kick just two times then, once to the left, once to the right, Kiyai each. Each, eeyaw. We'll take. Ni, iya. Wate, hey, yamai. And right, os. Hey, yoi. And back down to keep it at your stance. Each. Okay, so, yo ko geri kikomi. So, the big difference. As we step across, the transition is the same. Moving, staying the same height, but instead of pointing the knee where we want to go, this time we're pointing it to the front. We look at where we want to go. And then we're going to pivot and push with our hip. Bring it back. Same process as before, sitting down. Sitting down. Okay, so it looks the same. The start is the same. The transition is the same. But the knee is different. The knee is different. The knee comes to the front here. Okay, then we're looking. Push the heel. Back and then down. Um, again, the retraction of the foot, bringing it back to the knee, means you can kick again. With Kikomi, you really shouldn't ever have to because it's a real thrusting kick, okay? If you miss with Kikomi, that's because your distance is no good, in which case there's no suggestion that you should kick again, and you were probably too far away to punch anyway. So my view on this one is just the kick, bringing the leg back is to keep your form in case you need to punch, okay? Or move forward. Move forward would probably be more from a fighting perspective in my head. Okay, so keep your balance, come across, keep this knee bent, knee up to the front, 
push, kick, and back down. Look, knee up, push, back down. Look, knee up, push, back down. Look, knee up, push, back down. Oops. Now you might find that you're doing what I'm doing now, so I'm starting to cramp, which means I'm definitely not following a line in terms of my kicks. That's probably fatigue. <laughs> so don't waste so much on that, okay? Uh, we do notice that if we do kiyaki training or kiyaki training in the dojo, that the black belts essentially get squashed into the top wall because uh, everybody just seems to move towards that end of the dojo um, as, as we do this. So that's something to just bear in mind, but not super important. So the difference being, my Gary is a snap kick, Kiyagi Gary is a snap kick, yeah, and Kikomi Gary is a fuss kick. Difference, okay, that's what you need to remember um, when you're doing your kicks. Now, if you're a person that doesn't find kicks easy, okay, um, please don't be put off by the syllabus book only ever refers to Jodan and Chudan as the two target areas. Um, I don't know why that is, I think it's quite bad, but every, every syllabus book I've ever seen since I started karate 30 years ago has always just had Jodan and Chudan. However, all my black belts and myself, and in fact I think most black belts, would tell you that kicks lower than Chudan, groin, knee, tib and fibula, yeah, are, are super, super effective, if not more than kicks maybe here and certainly here, okay? So Jodan is this area, and that's the area you're attacking. So if you're doing a Mayagiri, you'll be to the throat, okay? If you're doing a Kiyagi Giri to the throat, Kikomi Giri to the throat. If you're doing a Mawashi Giri, which we're about to do now, it could be Chudan, or it could be Jodan. If it's Jodan, it will be here, side of the jaw, okay? And that's quite a difficult tick kick to do. I'll show you in a second uh, when we do the training. But please don't think you have to do it here. You have to do it here. You have to do it here. You can do it here. You can do it there. What will work for you? Okay. I've uh, trained with some um, people from all different sorts of uh, um, areas of life and ability and disability. Okay. Um, I've trained with uh, somebody who was uh, a dwarf. I've trained with somebody with only one leg. Um, I've trained with somebody who was um, uh, very much overweight, um, a bit like a sumo wrestler in terms of their build, okay? But all of those three people were able to do effective, devastating kicks, okay? And to look at them, you may think, no, they're going to be no good. Well, never, ever have that sort of mindset where you assume that somebody, because of their size or their age or their disability, is not going to be able to kick you because that's completely incorrect, Okay. Karate is open to everybody, and uh, I've even seen people in wheelchairs uh, do extremely good kicks. Okay. They're not kicking with their legs. We'll let you work out what they would be using to kick with. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is accessible to everybody, so please don't think what I do is what we're necessarily expecting you to do back. Um, I think, as I said on Tuesday, I used to be able to kick up here. I used to be able to kick door frames above my head. Um, it's lower now because I'm getting older. Us. So, uh, but, but what I've done is I've made those lower kicks more effective. So please train at your own level. And I'm saying this particularly because we're doing Washigiri now. So Washigiri is roundhouse kick, okay? And we're kicking um, with the ball of the foot. We're gonna use the ball of the foot, Koshi, okay? And the reason I want to do it with Koshi, there are variations of this kick, many variations, and that's why it's such a beautiful kick. But we're kicking with Koshi tonight because that's part of our basic syllabus, okay? You can kick with the top of the foot, Okay, you can kick with the back of the heel with this foot, you can kick with the sole of the foot with this kick. There's so many variations of it, but we're going to do just a straightforward, what I would say, a Kion Moshigiri. So the difference then between this and Maigiri is just really the, the, the knee coming to the side instead of going to the front and then rotating round. So um, if I demonstrate, then that might make more sense. Okay, so from your E position, okay, stepping forward down, Gilan each. Again, same position as before. So when we kick Maigiri, yeah, the weight stays on the front foot, the knee comes in, and we kick Maigiri. Mawashigiri, the weight stays on the front foot, the hip, okay, and the knee come together to the side. Now, depending on how high your knee is, the same as kicking Maigiri here will depend on how high you can kick. Remember, the knee does not flex behind beyond this point. 
Okay, so your knee, that's its infinite point. It can't bend the other way because your knee doesn't allow it to do so. So you need to work on how high your knee's going to be. So if you're kicking my Gary, your knee's this high, your kick will be that high. If you're kicking Washi Gary from this height, your kick, yeah? I hope that makes sense. Don't try to over kick. So if your knee only comes so high, you can only kick that high. Okay. If you go beyond that with Moshigiri, your foot will do this, it will go up, okay, and it becomes more Mayigiri. Now, when I used to compete uh, in Jukumite, okay, we used to have a technique called Mai Mawashi, Mai Mawashi, okay. Mai Mawashi was a front kick that basically got your opponent to block down towards that front kick, and then you flicked your hip, and you did a Moshigiri, okay. Very fast technique, very difficult to block, very difficult to read. Um, but that's not a true Mayagiri, it's not a true Mawashigiri. It's kind of a, um, a, a, a mix up of the two techniques as such. We've got to make sure that we're doing pure Mawashigiri. So, right, yoi, step forward, Gidamurai, each. Okay, so from this position, keep that knee where it is, and you want to be bringing this knee up as high as you can. Okay, as high as you can, as comfortable as you can, trying to maintain your balance. And the other danger with this kick is to do this, to get height, okay? Now, obviously, as soon as I start to tilt here, my balance is compromised hugely. Because my whole body, torso, my upper body, my torso, and one of the heaviest parts of my body, my head, are off my jiku point, my axis point. So this is, this is not good. The more you can keep upright, the better. I think the younger you are, the easier that is. I think when we get older, we do tend to tilt a bit more, maybe but try to keep yourself upright. So I'm just gonna do a, a Gidan kick just to start with, okay? So just a low level kick. So here, knee up around and kick and down. That wasn't Gidan, it was Chudan, but never mind. Okay, so this foot rotates the same as Kikomi, okay? And we did Kikomi on Tuesday, not doing it again, just did a quick practice, but this pivots. Yeah, so uh, just trying to get a camera, so this pivots. Now, depending on how flexible you are around your hip area, this will flex. If I'm kicking to you now, this foot could potentially turn up to 180 degrees. Okay, I don't know many people that rotate that much round to get their washi going in the correct place, but you can. Uh, most people will rotate around anything from 45, I'd say to about probably 130 degrees at the most, shouldn't need any more than that. And you're doing that on the ball of your foot. Now that rotation allows you to bring the, the kick round in an arc. Okay, uh, just trying to think which is the best way of showing you this. Uh, yeah, it, it comes round. That's why it's called roundhouse. Um, there used to be an old saying many, many years ago called a rap going round the houses. Okay, what that meant was you, you were not going straight, straight line. So you weren't walking down the street in a straight way, you were going round the back of the houses. Okay, so that's where it got its name from, from an English translation. I don't know where the Japanese got it from, but uh, essentially that's what it is. So your weight, step forward, get under right, each, hands to the side. So just kicking, rotate one round. So each, kick, and step down into Zen Kutsudachi from start. Okay, step back, get under right, and back to your E position. Okay, so you need to be able to free your hip up. Come around, kick, and back. Get under right. And again, each and back. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to show three levels of kick. So I'm going to go gidan. So gidan is groin and below. Okay, so uh, lower level kick. Same motion, ball of the foot. Knee still needs to come up. Okay, that's kicking my groin height. I don't know what it looks like in the camera because I can't see. Chudan, Chudan is here, so this is into the solar plexus now, possibly underneath the, the, the armpit, the, uh, where the floating ribs are, so Moshi Gary, this particular kick is devastating here. Okay, it's really, really effective, really good kick. So the knee now is the same as before, weight on the front foot, but the knee now has to come higher, come round, and kick. And in Jordan, there's a difference between there and there. Not that much higher. Same process, weight down, back up, bring the knee up higher, bring the leg round higher. Okay, 
and you're aiming for a horizontal kick, which I'll talk about more in a second. I'll explain that in a second. So jog down kick each. Okay, and step down. So once more in, in quick speed. Gidan. Chudan. Hey, Jordan. Okay. So when, when we talk about the foot, the angle of the foot should be as near to horizontal as possible. This is to enable, if we think of this part of the hand as the uh, ball of the foot, so think of these as very long toes, ball of the foot, edge of the foot, heel, okay? Remember these are our three points, our three points of contact when we're kicking. We turn on this, on one part of the foot, and then we hit with this on the other part of the foot. Okay, and that's that's the key thing here. So to kick with the ball of the foot, if I use my hand as my foot here, my kick comes around, I don't want to hit with the toes. The toes have to come back and the ball of the foot hits the target. Now to do that, it has to be horizontal. If it does this, okay, my, where's my power going? My power's going away from my target and you get this scuffing sort of technique. So this doesn't work. This doesn't work. So we have to try to get the position so that our hip is correct, our knees in the correct height for the kick that we're doing. So in other words, don't over kick, okay? Sometimes we, uh, our brain says we can do better than we can, um, and you have to really train your brain to go with what works for you effectively. And, and, and for that reason alone, always accept this and do not accept this. Okay, we see this a lot in gradings. Uh, I've done it myself hundreds of times, okay? But I know that that's a wrong kick, and I know that I've overdone it, okay? So sometimes if your body tells you, oh, enough's enough, yeah? Tuesday, I knew at the end of the lesson that I'd done a whole lesson, a whole hour of kicking, okay? Because my hamstring said, enough. So no training yesterday at all. Take a day off, rest, okay? No training at all. I mean, literally, I didn't even do my cycling, which I always do every day. So we have to listen to our bodies, if it's hurting here, around your uh, groin area, and in particular in your hip line, okay, then you're almost certainly not using your hip correctly and you're not pivoting correctly. Now, that's relatively common in karateka who are, teach who are learning uh, washigiri, so for juniors and, and uh, lower grade adults. Um, but you've got to ask yourself, why is it hurting? And that's when you have to really look at your kick. So it's good then to get someone to video it or sensei to look at it, okay, and say, where, where is it going wrong? And generally, it'll be something to do with you either tilting the wrong way or the right way, but too much, okay, and not rotating enough and using your hips. I, I suffered for years with this, this around, I was about a second down, I think, I've been training for quite a while. Um, I had a very good kicks. So there were Jodan kicks. I could comfortably kick way above my own head height, but... I had a lot of pain in this area. And it was because I wasn't using my hip properly. Okay. And in fact, what I was doing, I was almost fighting my hip rather than allow, allowing it to be free. So, so just bear this in mind. Moshigiri is not an easy kick, I think, what I'm trying to say. And done correctly, it's amazing. Done badly, it hurts. So just, just be mindful of that. So, us. Hey, yoi. And step forward, get them right. Each. Okay. So, again. Yeah, Gyakazuki, Gyakazuki, think of that hip coming round. Mawashi Gary, think of the foot, this position here. That's what you've got to think of. Yeah. This sort of arc coming around. Yeah. Coming around. Yeah, you just, and then you just let the leg go. So not, not an easy kick, okay? For me, uh, I'm left-legged, so I find left-leg Jodan really easy. I find right-leg Jodan really, really difficult, like really hard now. I used to be able to do it in my 20s and 30s and maybe in my 40s, but now I've reached a milestone where it's becoming much harder to do. So I go lower, still do a good kick that is more effective Chudan than trying to stretch and over kick and do a bad Jodan. So I come round, make it fast. Chudan Gary. See there, the foot started to creep up. It's not a good kick anymore. It's not a good kick anymore. So you've got to try to dissect what is going wrong. Why is it not working? Why is the foot coming up? And, and here I can tell you now, 
that that was pulling my back there. So there is something I'm out of balance. So when I do the same kick, the same height here, that feels fine, feels natural, no pull in the back. So why then? And that time less so. So try to dissect it, try to think about uh, the kick as you do it um, and, and analyze. Don't accept that it's bad, okay? Don't ever accept it's bad. Accept that it's not good enough and try to develop it. Because you can't shy away from things you dislike in shirt, can? You have to have balance, or as much as you can. So you won't have perfect balance, okay? But you must try to address the balance. If you just say, I can kick amazing with my left leg, I can punch amazing with my left hand, but I'm not very good with my right hand, leg and my right hand, you have this huge gap. Okay, karate, we're always trying to, to close that gap, to get balance, balance, all round karate -ka. Some people, it comes to them naturally, other people have to really, really work at it. Yeah, I'm one of those people that had to work at it. Nothing came naturally to me in karate at all, okay? Maybe fighting did. Don't ask me why, because I never used to fight as a kid, so, uh, but, but I was good at competing and, and uh, understanding the battle, I think, more than anything else. Uh, maybe more mind than physical. But everything else to me came difficult, okay? Everything else was practice, everything else was failure, everything else was just doing techniques that were causing me lots of pain until I worked how to do them properly. Okay, so us. When we get together, I'm gonna to show you how to do it all again, don't worry. Okay, so uh, stepping forward to get Ambroy. Itch. So my washi derry, so kicking forwards, just one kick. Itch. Good, back leg across, my wate. Hands to side, and kicking again. Itch. And my wate. And yeah, me. And me. Oss. Okay, so within our syllabus, we obviously do more washi gary in a slightly more different context. So, us, yoi, and step forward, get amurai, itch, <laughs> hands to the side. So, we do a kicking combination that is more washi gary, gyakazuki yurakanuchi. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate that. So, this is for a high grade brown belt. So, sort of first, second, sorry, First, second, second cue above. Don't know why I was getting first cue from. So coming around, Mawashi Geri, Gyakazuki, Yurakanuchi. So again, Mawashi Geri, Gyakazuki, Yurakan. So that's a higher grade. Within the other grades, within within your syllabus book, okay, you just do Mawashi Geri. You just do Mawashi Geri. Uh, Trying to find an example, adult syllabus. We normally choose the juniors. Adult syllabus, so Moshigeri comes in when you're grading for green belt. Okay, it does the same for juniors um, and continues as Moshigeri. Moshigeri Yurakan comes in from brown and white belt. So second cue, uh, show and upwards. Okay, and that's really just all we do in terms of Moshigeri from the basic syllabus. From here, Moshigeri, Gekazuki, Yurakan. Okay, enough on that. Washigiri, tough kick. Now comes the tough one. No, not really. I don't think so. I, I think Yushirigiri is an easy kick, but it's probably done badly by most people, okay, because of a misunderstanding. And for me, I did this kick for years wrong, um, definitely. Uh, I definitely wasn't understanding the kick. Uh, I went to Japan. I was very lucky to go to Japan in 2004. Um, I think at that time I might have been a sandan, a third dan, something like that. So I should know how to kick properly. But uh, what was interesting, I, I took a class with uh, Suzuki Sensei, he's one of the Hombu instructors at uh, the Kugaharo Dojo in uh, just outside of uh, uh, Tokyo. Uh, Kanazawa Sensei's uh, Hombu Dojo, as it were. So um, the SKIF, I think it is, uh, uh, Hombu Dojo. And Suzuki Sensei was teaching us how to do Shirogeri. Okay, And there was three of us that were from, uh, I'd say, Europe. So there was myself from obviously from England, there was uh, a guy from Switzerland and I think a guy from Hungary. And we were all over six foot. We were dwarfing, unfortunately, Japanese uh, students and instructors. We were much taller than any of them. Um, and it was quite apparent that we were doing Yashirigeri wrong just by the fact that we were rotating and almost kicking some of the other students. So what I mean by that is when you do Yashirigeri, which is back kick, lots of people, when they start to learn it, think it's a spinning kick and they rotate round and they might do the odd face plant, they might fall over. It's a lot of fun. Your head goes spinning with it, 
And um, it feels like you're doing karate, but it's all wrong. <laughs> Okay, and you may do that for many, many years when you're learning your shirigiri, but it's not a spinning kick at all. It is a thrust kick. Okay, it, your shirigiri means back, so it's back kick. This kick was designed to kick someone behind you. Okay, so we're going back to thrust, if you remember. Okay, we've done maigiri, which is a snap. We've done kiyagigiri, which is a snap. We've done kikomi, which is a thrust, and now we're doing shirigiri, which is a thrust. Oshigiri is also more of a snap. Okay. Um, so, so that we're now going to go back to thrust. So we're going to be pushing, pushing our opponent away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and break this kick down to you to make it easier for you to practice at home. Okay. And then when we come back to the dojo and we have room to do five forwards and five back, it becomes that a little bit easier. And then I'll show you the higher grades, what we do in terms of the combination, uh, which is really, really simple. So you should again, probably the best thing to do then is step forward in Zen statue each. Okay. So what I want you to do is forget about your front foot, okay? So if it's your right or left foot, whichever your favorite, it makes no difference. I'd probably suggest you choose the, your favorite kicking side, okay? So this feels a bit more comfortable. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw the back leg up, okay, into the direction, and you, and you need to keep looking where you're kicking. Most people, when they kick your shirage, they turn immediately, and that's why they start to rotate and spin. And that, that's the biggest problem with this. What you have to do is, if my target is the camera lens, I need to look to this point, looking at the camera lens. Okay, You still see me, I still see you. And then when I go through the kick, which comes straight line, it's following this line here, Okay, my knees up, I see it hit you. I, I see it hit you. I actually see it hit you because I rotate my head only at the end of the technique, not before. So if I follow my kick, I come round and I start to rotate and start to lose form and start to lose the technique. So what I've got to do for my Zen Kutsudachi, okay, is come to keep this line. So I want to travel down this line straight to the camera lens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show my hip to the camera lens. Okay, and this is not me sticking my bottom out in front of my opponent because that's a bit rude. I'm thrusting my hip sideways here so that I know that my hip bone is where my kick is gonna end up. And then essentially from here, if I turn this way, this foot is in cat stance, okay? So Niko Ashidachi, so, but it's a transitional move. It doesn't stop there, so you're not actually doing the stance, but that's what it looks like. So if I do it from this way, you see that's the, yoy, that's the halfway yoy position. So this is here. Then what happens is the knee comes up here and kick back, kick back, and then you turn around. So, look at your target, show the hip, and then kick through. One stance, hip, kick through. And you're pushing, you're pushing, okay? Not, not flicking, not flicking. You're kicking with your heel, your heel, kakato, okay? Um, and, and it's not an easy kick. Now, perfectionists, okay, people who are seeking perfection in their character and karate, that's a good thing, which is one of our uh, dojikun. You are trying to get the foot a vertical angle, so tati, tati is vertical, okay? So what we're looking for is foot down, heel up. Foot down, heel up. What most of us will do, okay, through the sheer physiology of our bodies and not being in the quite correct alignment, we'll be kicking with our foot as horizontal. Okay, so our heel will be more kick on me. Kick on me, and that's okay, okay, that's okay. But seeking perfections of technique and understanding technique, you really wanna be aiming for that foot upside down. Okay, that rotation. So when you're this position here, yeah, so if I'm showing my hip here, my head, my head only comes as I turn my hip and then the foot should go down. So toes down, heel up, okay. Um, I'm not sure how that comes across on camera, if I'm perfectly honest, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So if we, I'm just changing legs to give you a different view. So we come up to this halfway position. Hip is now facing where I want to kick, but I'm still looking where I want to kick. I'm looking, okay, until these hips come around, 
and then I'm ready to drive the hip through and look where I'm kicking. Just so happens I kick completely off target there, so I'll do it again. So looking at the camera, here, come through, kick, and down. Now the foot there was definitely horizontal, I felt it. Now I can feel that, you may not feel it, so you should be looking though where your kick is going. If you find that you don't know where your kick went, that means you're not looking. Okay, and we see this a lot actually. When people first start to learn with this kick, they literally take their head away immediately. So their opponent is there, and this remember is a thrust kick, so this is a kick that's gonna do some damage, and they literally spin their head and have absolutely no idea where that lands. And in fact, most people will often kick still looking, still looking this way. So this is not, not good. This is not good. It's certainly not good if you get kicked with a shiriri. Um, I don't know if you've ever been kicked by a shiriri. I certainly have. Blooming painful, okay? Uh, us, konnichiwa. <laughs> konnichiwa, everybody, love it. So um, it's really important to get this alignment correct. And I think that's what I was trying to get to is when I was at that lesson in, in Japan in particular, Suzuki Sensei drew, drew on a board because we didn't understand the, the Japanese he was using. Um, and he showed us the line that we should be following. And he said, he said, you're, you're, you're not following the line. He said, you're, you're almost you're doing a washi. You're coming round. He said, so he said, you drive through. So straight line, straight line. Okay, so that's what he kept saying. And he drew on the board. It made more sense seeing it on the board, if I'm honest, okay? He drew two feet and showed us the line that we should be here. Okay, and you stay along that line. So I've got the tiles here. So my feet are either side of the tiles. Notice my stance isn't too wide. Yeah, this is, this is too wide. So you want a nice, but you want to kind of follow this line. So you stay here, and so you're kicking through. Okay, so that, that, again, not an easy kick to, to really practice, um, but I think easier to understand, okay? As long as you keep the rules. The rules are Zen Kutsudachi, keep looking where you are going, okay? Only at the point where you're bringing your knee up to ready to kick, you turn your head and then you can kick. Oops. Okay, so I think um, that's something we need to practice maybe more in the dojo. It's better when you have an opponent, okay, uh, somebody who's a little bit further away than they need to be, but you can use them as a guide. And, and what you're doing is you're looking, okay, and then when you turn your head, you're kicking and you see the foot land. That, that's really, really uh, helpful and important. Um, you should be able to do this partnered up, okay, and be able to kick here comfortably, pulling it, okay, so just touching, or having your distance good enough so that you can just touch, okay. If you're kicking here, you're not looking where you're kicking, okay, so it's really important to, to remain focused on your opponent. This kick can cause great harm, so if you're going to do it, you need to know where it's going. Uh, I've been in fights, can we tell matches where people have just spun around and kicked someone and uh, really, really hurt them because there's been no thought of the opponent. Okay, there's just the thought is win the point, win the match, but not thinking of their opponent. Okay, um, I've always uh, been of the mindset that whenever we fight, regardless if it's in competition or dojo uh, or grading, it is always think of your partner. Okay, think of your opponent. Yeah, ultimately the aim of karate is not to kill people. Okay, it is, it is to, for us particularly in modern karate, is to work together, train together, learn from each other constantly. Um, if you had to do such a devastating kick so as you wanted to hurt somebody, yeah, you would be able to do it because you just follow that form. But in the dojo, and when you're training and when you're competing, you don't need to do that. Okay, so, so for me, control is a really important part of, um, of karate. So that's what I want you to do, is I want you to focus the most on your head more than the actual kick itself. Looking at your opponent here, and only then when you can see that foot yourself land, and you can bring it back if you have to, yeah? I've done this kick on people before where they've clearly come into punch Gakazuki as I'm kicking your shirigari, and I've had to pull it. <laughs> now, pulling a Kikomi kick is very difficult uh, because you're about to thrust your hip, yeah? But you can still do it. I still believe you can do it, and I still believe you can do it successfully. Um, uh, just control, it's all, all control. So again, this is not a kick I find easy. It's not a kick I've ever found easy. I think I'm just tall and lanky. It doesn't suit my build, okay? But um, I've used it effectively in competition. Um, I've never 
really done a lot with the ingredients. Um, for me, uh, the weakness to this kick is showing your back. Okay, so that's why, again, another reason that when you're doing this, you're not showing your back, you're showing your hip. Yeah, you don't give them an opportunity to get your back. So here, I'm still very much almost like shutoki. So my body position is such that they can't really do anything here. Because my arms, are, my arms, if we we're if we we're doing this properly, my arms would be here. There's nothing for them to hit. My hip, and then I spin and kick through. So that's that's what I'm gonna do. The other thing is try not to tilt. Now this is probably my bugbear is tilting. Uh, with my lower leg issues, um, I tilt, unfortunately. And you try to stay upright, try to stay here, bring the foot up, kick back. Yeah, like so. Try, try to keep upright rather than tilting forwards. Um, for me, I find that certainly now as I'm getting older, much harder to do, much harder to do. So this kick is very strong, very powerful, but also has a weakness. Okay, and the weakness is you're turning. When you're turning, you're vulnerable. Okay, most people that I would compete against would use this kick on me. I'd usually score with a punch before they kicked me. Uh, you, you can see it coming to a degree. Uh, people build up to this kick because it needs momentum. Okay, um, that said, I know some people can do this incredibly fast and, and devastatingly quick. So you know, there's there's a argument for both sides. So within our syllabus, once you've done the basic kick, and, and this, by the way, doesn't come in and, and in your syllabus until much further down the line. So if we go to the adult syllabus again, um, grading for purple belt, you'll do the more shigeri, okay? Grading for um, uh, brown belt, you start you shirigeri, and it's the same for the juniors, okay? So this comes in around that level. And then once you've seen it as a, as a basic kick, and you'll see that for a while, the only other change that we'll make in our syllabus is Yushirigeri Gekazuki. Now, a lot of people like this because it's almost as if the punch balances the kick better. Okay, it's almost as if the afterthought makes that kick just feel that little bit more uh, comfortable, I think. So, Yoi. So, this is now just for third cue, um, uh, sorry, second cue and above. So, step four, Ginambrai. Okay, so the same rules as before, all from the hip, okay, come through kick, and then punch Gekazuki. Change legs, kick, punch Gekazuki. And we'll change legs this time. So from here, kick, Gekazuki. Okay, so again, it's not, not easy, but I think it helps your balance a little bit because you're landing with a punch, you're using your hit to correct your stance, as it were. But if you spin your kick, your, your, your punch will be off. Yeah, you'll be disjointed. So try to make sure that when you're coming through here, yeah, this is the punch in hand, remember? Here, that, that balance, so you drive that punch home. Uh, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, do this technique. They do the kick badly, the punch great. Okay, very rarely do we see the uh, kick great, punch bad. It's generally the, the kick. So uh, it's just something to practice. Okay, it's something to practice within your karate. It's part of the grading syllabus. So you can expect this kick. Um, pretty much, as I said, from sort of going towards your brown belt and moving forwards. Um, it, it can be really good. Okay, it's a difficult kick, I think, to do. Challenging kick, but uh, kicks are challenging. Yeah, we're using big parts of the body, big limbs. So just a quick recap then of where we've got to with the kicks. So in our basic syllabus, we're obviously kicking Maigiri, okay? Yoko Geri Kiyagi, so this is the sack kick that we did earlier. Yoko Geri Kikomi, the thrust kick. Then we've got Mawashi Geri, roundhouse kick. And then finally, oh, finally, a very bad, and now a better Yushiro Geri. Getting tired, you can tell. So there are five major kicks, okay? That's a Maigiri, a Yoko Geri Kiyagi, Yoko Geri Kikomi, Mawashi Geri, a Yushiro Geri. Okay, so there are our five combinations. There, there are many more kicks to do, and you will get taught those within your lessons, um, but they are not part of the formal syllabus, okay? So please bear in mind that there is way much more that goes beyond that little booklet. That booklet gives you the basics of karate to get you to black belt. There are many more techniques, uh, Fumakomi, stamping kick, uh, Fumakiri, cutting kick, Mikazukageri, um, uh, crescent kick. 
There is so many more kicks, okay? Here's a Gary, I can think of loads now, they're just suddenly totally coming to my head. But we are just focusing on five basic kicks to get you through to that first level, okay? And that's what black belt is, it's the first level of the real stuff, the good stuff as I call it, okay? So that, that just, that's all you need, that's all you need. You need your basic blocks, your basic punches, your basic combinations, your basic kicks, and then you're there, okay? You're ready to take your black belt. Once you've got your black belt, you walk around a little bit taller, because it's a lovely feeling to wear one of these, okay? It's a real personal achievement. And then what you're able to do is then to really start to get into karate, drill it down, okay, and understand why you're not doing things right. So for me now, I, I find that I, I know where I'm, go where I'm going wrong. Yeah, some of those things are correctable, okay, so which I have to, that's where I have to challenge myself to try and do those. Some things are not. Some things are just physiological, so I can't change those things, okay? So you make adaptions, you change things slightly. Um, I think that's really important. If you watch uh, two fighters in their 20s, okay, compete in a kumite match, and then watch the same two fighters, the same two, yeah, 30 years later in their 50s fight, you will see a vast difference between the way they fight. These two are gung-ho and super happy and just literally spinning around, throwing kicks around like they're confetti. These two, much slower, more methodical thinking approach. You see those two then, another 30 years later, so you have two karateka in their 80s fighting, and don't think they don't, because they do, okay? And you see again a different form of fighting. None of them as bad. They're all good as one another, but they're different ways of doing it. So as I said before, karate is accessible to everybody, particularly Shotokan, regardless of your age, of your ability, okay? And what, what you've got to understand is that it changes and it evolves. Uh, some of my senseis uh, that, that train with me now have known me a long time. They'll know the way that I used to fight when I was younger. They'll also know the way I fight now after injury and age. <laughs> yeah, it's different. I don't bounce around like I used to. I don't need to. I think more. I, I see things move quicker uh, even though I'm older. It's a real possibility with Shotokan Karate. So anyway, I hope that's that's kind of give you a flavor of the kicks. We've done now the, the basic punches of uh, uh, Oizuki, Chokazuki, Gakazuki, Irakunuchi, okay? Then we've covered off the blocks of Agyuki, Sotoruki, Uchiuki, Gidambarai, Shutuuki, okay? And then we've done the kicks of Maigeri, uh, Yokogeri Kiyagi, Yokogeri Kikomi, Mawashigeri, Shirigeri. And that essentially is a platform for your basics, for your grading. So that's one third of your grading complete, providing you do well. Plus, at your grading, you'll be given chances to do that five times forward and five times backward. That's so that us as examiners can see you uh, practice. We all, as you probably saw with that last Yashiro Gary, we all stagger sometimes and we get it completely wrong. Our bodies don't do what they want to, we want them to do. So we give you an ability to, to be able to correct that within that five. Yeah, so I always said to my students, be mindful that you have five goes. Yeah, three of those might be rubbish, but two can be good, or one okay and one really good. Yeah, that's, that's what you're always, always trying to achieve. So if you do a bad one in a grading, don't let that knock you. Be more positive. Continue, continue. Keep practicing. Keep trying. Don't give up. Yeah, if you give up on number one, there's no point you coming back to the dojo. That's not the mindset of a black belt. Black belts, most of us have failed. Okay, uh, I failed when I took my black belt the first time. It was very upsetting. I trained five nights a week for four and a half years and... I deserved it. I thought I was good enough. I practiced definitely enough, but I wasn't ready. Okay, not here. Here, yes, but not here in the head. So, easy route is to step away from that and not continue training, or you come back and you fight again. So, I trained and took my black belt. With Sixteen other karateka. Sixteen. Okay, sixteen of us grading on that day. It was a very busy time. Um, I was one of the very few that failed. I am the only person still training. Yeah, so some of those people who passed that day, passed their black belts, didn't come back. Some of them went on to second dance, some of them, one of them went on to third dan. No one went beyond that. No, that's the difference. Okay, the only difference between me and a white belt is 30 years of training and not giving up. The white belt hasn't had a chance to give up yet, which is good. Hopefully they won't. Okay, we'll finish the lesson there. No power cuts, which is good. So I'm quite happy. Us. 
Um, I hope you've enjoyed that lesson. Um, I found it rather challenging myself. I'm not going to lie, an hour of kicking for me is uh, not great. Um, not now, but uh, um, I enjoyed teaching it at least. So uh, what we'll do is we'll do the dojo to say goodbye and then um, black belts. Hopefully I'll see you Saturday. Fingers crossed, all goes well that I can join you. Um, but as you know, I may not be able to. Uh, everybody else, see you next Tuesday um, and Thursday, hopefully within the uh, virtual dojo. Remember, um, we're planning on possibly being able to maybe get back to the dojo in April for juniors. Okay, the government is sort of saying, suggesting that uh, juniors can be taught after the 12th of April and adults after the 17th of May. Okay. One of our halls has already fantastically, wonderfully contacted me this evening. Um, they're keen to get us back as soon as they can. Not sure on dates yet. So remember, we're governed by the halls, really, not by what the uh, government says and such. It's, it's when the halls want to open and when they can open. So as soon as I know, I will let you know. Keep your eyes on our social media, Facebook and YouTube, uh, the, the website as well. Us. Okay, we'll finish there. Kionsuke and Ray. Dojo kun. Hitots Junkan Ko Kansei ni Sorotu Koto. Hitots Makato no Michio Mamoru Koto. Hitots Doryoko no Seishin Yashino Koto. Hitots Ryo Mojo Koto. Hitots Keki no Yo Imashimuru Koto. Anyway, right. us. Us. Thank you very much. Domo Arigato Gizamas. Uh, or your suicide, arigato gozaimasu. Good night and have a fantastic weekend. Uh, Black Belt, see you Saturday and uh, hopefully see you all soon. Us, Jamatane, see you soon. Us, Isaac, uh, very good active lesson. Yes, tell me about it. My back is killing me. And yes, my leg is really hurting this evening. Us, yeah, very, very true. I'm getting old. What can I say? But thank you all for joining me. It's awesome. And uh, please continue to do so because um, I only do this for you guys because. Uh, well, hopefully you enjoy it as much as I do. Us, good night. Arigato.